Okay, well, you've been to, to Monastery Brookings in Shrewsbury now. I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've Some seen place. how we make the oil. Yeah. So we're now going to see how the oil works, basically. In my shed. In, in your shed. Well, yeah. Great setting. It's all right, isn't it? Very relaxing. Right. A bit of a tip at the minute, mate. That's all right. But plenty of tea on offer. So that's, that's the main we're thing. We're all right, boy. Go um, on. So the, okay. the plan is then. Yeah, so today we're going to be looking at engine oils and, and engine oils specifically used in, in agricultural applications. So yeah. Obviously, we're stood in front of this particular beast here today. And um, so, yeah, so, so looking at agricultural engines, I mean, they, they have a very hard work life. Okay, so a lot of their available power is used. Once this is on full whack and is being used out in the fields, not only is it driving the tractor forward, it's driving its ancillary equipment, which may also be on the back. You'd reckon it has, has an hour life and a truck? Oh, definitely, yeah. You reckon? reckon? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you've got something pulling, I don't know, 40 tonnes cruising up a motorway, that's an easy life for the oil and for the engine. Right. But when you've got something which is doing, you know, a, a variety of different workloads, like these, these, these do, that, that's, a, that's a tougher job. And the other biggest problem as well, and this, this is an example, this one here has got a, an EGR on it, so exhaust gas recirculation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. EGR actually promotes incomplete combustion in order to control NOx emissions. So you actually, EGR engines are very, very sooty. So you get a lot of soot build up in EGR engines. Right, um, but yeah, of course I suppose they, it's sucking up its own exhaust yeah, gas, you put it, it? You, can't, you can't reburn that. So soot is, is, a, is, a, is a big problem um, for these, these types of engines. So you have to formulate to make sure you're protecting from the effects of soot. Soot can also thicken the lubricant up as well. So if you get too much too much um, soot in the lubricant, um, then basically it, it will thicken it up to a point where it can't cool and circulate effectively. Oh so when this is working hard on a hot summer's day and you want maximum cooling for all the components, you're starting to get overheat, basically. And of course, when things overheat, they're not within working parameters. So you don't get maximum efficiency out of the equipment. And that can obviously lead to, to problems as well. But this one here we stood in front of, this is um, a tier three, stage three, emissions compliant engine. Yeah, but if yeah, you fast yeah. forward to where we are today with tier four stage five compliant engines, then obviously you're gonna have an after treatment device bundle on here. So on the exhaust stack normally. So this hasn't, this has only got EGR, but as soon as you start to talk tier four stage five, then you're putting AdBlue systems on, which you're familiar with. As well as EGR. As well as, well as EGR. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And DPFs, these are particular filters. Yeah, that'll be yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, then you're putting, you may have even diesel oxidation catalyst as well. So these give you um, an additional, uh, additional catalyst system, which cleans up the exhaust gases a little bit more as well. Mm -hmm. But all of those are sensitive to the chemistry that you use in the engine oil. So when we, when we formulate at Morris, we have to make sure that we are balancing that chemistry to not look after, not only look after the guts of the engine, you know, all the cams and uh, uh, piston rings, etc. Roundy, roundy, uppy, yeah, downy bits in there. Yeah, they? exactly. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The bread and butter stuff. Yeah. Um, then you've also got to look after the after treatment devices, because if you if your chemistry is wrong, you'll poison the catalysts, reduce their service life. They're expensive to replace, as you know. Oh, another bloody fortune. Um, yeah. And you can prematurely block DPFs as well. Right. Which, okay. as you know, are expensive. Yeah, bloody expensive. Yeah. So. So to make sure that you, you, know, to, you want to protect, uh, and this is an investment for a lot of people, this is, this is their livelihood. Mm. You know, yeah, you, you know yeah. you've, you've worked, you know, you're in an agricultural area here, and, and you understand the, the need for this equipment to be as reliable as possible. Yeah, yeah it gets some ammo. Yeah, no farmer wants this in a workshop, do they? <laughs> when he's supposed to be out there. the money. Absolutely, yeah. earning the money. So, so you know, so it's, it's a, of a critical importance when you're selecting the engine oil for this type of engine, that it's, it's at the correct performance level, the correct quality to give you all those benefits and reliability and reduce downtime. Mm -hmm. that, that's really the, the takeaway from that, if you're using the correct engine oil. So, oh, Is there a fair difference from agricultural engine oil than there is from truck engine oil, the wagon that's going down the road? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are subtle differences. I mean, um, you know, one, one of the things for, for trucks, for example, you know, they, they, they can get up to a nice cruising speed and they can just go down a motorway or an autobahn or whatever else and nice and that's e that's easy work that's easy work for an engine that's easy work for a lubricant but but they might also have extended oil drain intervals on them mm -hmm. you know there are some truck manufacturers now talking about 200,000 kilometer oil drain yeah intervals. yeah yeah i think we're at 120,000 know? with ours whereas we're, we're, how often would you service your 500 your hours 500 hours yeah but we're using like our tiers well the euro six at work yeah. they're generally well yeah yeah they're, they're like 12 uh, 120,000 kilometers yeah and then yeah. what i'm putting in the tractors is like a 1540. yeah because to actually to to actually prove fuel efficiency in this environment is very, very difficult because of the workload. Mm -hmm. you know, say, if you're cruising down a motorway, you can maximise your fuel efficiency. 
Uh, but if you're doing lots of stop-start work, you know, pulling things, not pulling things. I mean, a lot of these nowadays aren't obviously to, to have reasonable road speeds as well. You know, yeah, 60k boxes. Yeah, absolutely. Not this one, this one, and this one, and but yeah, some of them some bigger, can, some you of them know. Bigger than 60k. Well, that was unheard of not long ago. You would never get tractors going at that speed down a, down a country yeah, lane. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you've got a real mixed bag of workloads, and so you've got to cater for all that. Whereas actually, trucks have a reasonably easy life, but they may have very, very long oil drain intervals. Mm -hmm. It's all about picking the correct performance level for that particular application. Yeah. What would you generally say for your tractors then? What well, hour? What hour? Again, it depends on the manufacturer. But and I just know, do them at 500 because yeah. generally in between jobs, it's 500 hours. Absolutely. I mean, you know, sooner is better than leaving well, so What would you always. say? What? Well, depending on the manufacturer, but it could be anywhere between 500, 750 hours. It's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. so they, they all have their oh, own. So you'd be led by the manufacturer, really? Uh, you don't always, recommend? Yeah. Right. We would never, never recommend. We never make up our own oil drain intervals, you know. Right. The engineers who have put these together, they know exactly what should be required. Mm -hmm. And they know exactly how long that oil should last. To give you maximum protection because obviously if you go past that then the the performance it all drops off and the protection yeah, starts to drop yeah, off as yeah, well yeah, you know yeah so yeah so a hard job a difficult job for a lubricant but as i say at morris lubricants you know we're formulating to to, to comply with all its needs so you can go into a variety of different makes and model of tractor okay so uh, we can keep uh, this particular investment on the road uh, and man. in the field of course Top man, we like yeah, yeah absolutely sound, sound. so that's engine oils guy. So okay. you've seen how they, they were, uh, how, understand how they work in this particular application. Um, but if you'd like to see um, any more content like this or any more videos with Guy, then visit Morris Lubricants website or our YouTube channel.